I'll go on YouTube. Well, in the last video that we uploaded, I promised to value spiritual stock at the end of the video. And guess what? I did value the stock, but I never added to the video simply because it would make the video too long. And people are complaining about the videos being too long. This video will value spiritual stock. All right. So just watch the video until the end. Tell me what you think about the assumptions that were put into the, um, the model and tell me what you think about the price that we are getting for Spurchy shares. Do you believe Spurchy has the capacity to grow to the value that we give the company? The discussion in the comment section, let me know what you think about the entire valuation of Spurchy. I may see you in the next video. This is a model that we use to value Spurchy stock at IPO. All right. So the, this model includes all the information and all the assumptions that we made about Spurchy's operation at IPO based on the information that was in the prospectus. So now the company releases its first quarter result for 2022 um i think it's time for us to do an update of the spurchy stock price all right because new information is now in the market and there are some errors in the assumptions that we made or some of the assumptions that we made need to be updated all right so I'm just going to walk you through the model and then we will do an updated version of the model in order to value the spiritual stock. All right. So first and foremost, the model has three parts. So the top section of the model includes all the assumptions that we included in our evaluation of Spurchy's stock price. Then you have the second section of the model, and this is where the assumptions came out. All right. So those are the figures that we got for the company based on the based on the assumptions that we made. And then the last quarter or last third of the model includes the valuation of the company. All right. So let us get into, into the analysis or the valuation of the company. So our base year was 2020, all right? And the turnover for that year was $700 million, all right? $700 million, $663,000. All right. Now we assume that that turnover or revenue will grow at some twenty percent for the next five years. All right. So you see where the twenty percent is. All right. That's a, that's our assumption. And when we say grow twenty percent for the next five years, we mean that that's a compounded growth rate. All right. So we are assuming that the uh, the revenue will grow twenty percent each year. All right, so it's not 20% over a five year period, but a 20% each year. All right, so that depicts a high growth company. Now, for the second five year, that is from year six to year 10, we step down on the growth rate. So we are assuming a 10% growth rate for the company. So as a company matures into a more stable company, all right, and as a company matures, we're expecting that growth rate should be cut all right so after 10 years until eternity is what we call the terminal value or the terminal years all right where we are assuming a two percent growth rate all right so we use two percent because we do not believe that a company can grow forever at a pace that is higher than the economical case in which the company operates or the global case in which go, uh, the company operates, all right? So that's a reason for that low growth rate at the end, uh, at the terminal section of 
the model all right so let me just change the ink here for a few for a bit all right so operating margins all right so here we have our operating margin these are assumptions about the operating margin of a company so we are assuming the company will have an operating margin of some eight percent right throughout the period 8.3 percent all right and as i said this is the average of the operating margin over the five years that was given in the prospectus all right so we are expecting we were anticipating that the operating margin would be 8.3 percent but we see we're in this first quarter result that the company um distributes the operating margin actually doubled to about 16 percent all right so what has happened the company is getting more efficient all right so the company is expanding the company is scaling up its um, production capacity both from the spreadsheets perspective and from the exotic product um, business, all right? So as a company scales up, it reaches what they call an economies of scale, all right? So it becomes more efficient, all right? And the company management in, in, in the notes that accompany the result is saying that they will continue to scale up the operation because the market is huge and there is a large potential in the market. So we are, we are to expect the scaling up of the operation to continue, all right? All right, so the other thing that we need to look at, the reinvestment rate is very important. This is the amount of money that goes back into the business, all right? And we, are, and we use a percentage of the company's revenue as a reinvestment so it's a it's it's a multiple of the revenue or a factor of the revenue that we use to get the reinvestment all right as you can see the tax rate is zero for the first ten, um, five years here is zero for the first five years up to 10 year all right and then the company will go back to paying tax taxes all right so as it relates to the result this is the assumption of the revenues that we have all right and you see where we are projecting revenue to be 840 million dollars for 2021 all right and the company's revenue came out to something close to that figure but 2022 we are projecting the company will breach the billion dollar revenue and revenue will continue to flow up until seven years. We are expecting the company to pull in over $2 billion in revenue. All right. And that will continue. Now, operating margin, as we, as we said before, is 8.3%. All right. And we assume that right throughout the period. Now, EBITDA, that's where EBITDA is. And this is EBITDA after tax. Now, you can, uh, what, what you can see is that for the first five years, EBITDA and EBITDA after tax is the same figure because the company will not pay any taxes for the first five years. It's a junior um, company that is listed on the junior market, um, harm of the stock exchange and the junior market companies do not pay taxes for the first five years. And then they pay a 50% tax for the um, six years leading up to 10 years. So we took that tax into consideration. This is the reinvestment amount and the reinvestment amount come to $25 billion, uh, million dollars per year. And that's on average. All right. So it could mean that the company spends some, like, like now the company is in an expansionary mode. We're expecting that the company will um, spend heavily on its capital project in, 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 in the short term. But as a company matures, it will spend less money on its capital expenditure. However, we are using a average figure all right so we assume this right throughout the period now what we get here is what they call um free cash flow for the firm all right so this is the money that will come into the firm after the firm pays all the bills all right and and, and all the costs for that is associated with the operation all right however free cash flow for the firm um goes to both equity holders that is the shareholders and to the creditors all right, so creditors will have to get their share or their slice of the free cash flow to the firm. All right. 
So let us go down to the, the section of the model that deals with the valuation of the company. All right, so the terminal value of the company, all right, and those are all the cash flows that the company will get after the 10 years for eternity. So after 10 years, the cash flow that comes after 10 years for eternity, that is the cash flow for the 11th year, 12th year, 13th year onwards. All right. So all of that money we are assuming will be equal to $7 billion. All right. So that money will equal be equal to $7 billion. And if we find the present value of those money, that will equal to $4.5 billion. And when we talk about present value, that money in 10 years time will be $7 billion. But we want the money to represent today or be, be presented in today's dollar value, all right? So if we're to get, we're gonna get $7 billion for the, from the company in 10 years time, but what would that money be today, all right? So what it is saying is that $7 billion in 10 years time is equal to $4 billion, $4.5 billion today, all right? In other words, if somebody who owe you seven billion dollar, or to pay you seven billion dollar, if somebody is to pay you seven billion dollars in ten years time, you can take from that person four point five billion dollar today to settle that debt. All right, so it is that reasoning. All right, so the free cash flows. All right, which is these free cash flows that we are talking about. All right, all of those free cash flows in today's dollar value also equal to $820 million. All right, so when we had all of both present value together, which is a $4.5 billion plus the $820 million, we get a value of $5.3 billion. All right. No, that is the present value of all the free cash flows to the firm. All right. Now, what we want to do is to add cash to, to that. Now, at the time, cash was worth $55 million. So we add cash to that. All right. Now, we want to pay the debtors or the creditors their part of the, the free cash flow. All right. So with less creditors, uh, less debt. But what we realized, the company had no debt at the time. All right, so the value of the company, all of the money that the company will generate over its life is $5.3 billion. All right, now this is us assuming that the company has no risk and all of these cash flows are guaranteed. All right, but in real life, there is no guarantee. The cash flows are not guaranteed. All right, so that's an issue. So what we'll have to do is to adjust those cash flows in order for us to get a probability of those cash flows occurring, all right? So we did our little calculation and when we adjust those cash flows for the probability of them not occurring, we get a value of 2.6 million um, billion dollars all right so that's the fair value of this company at ipo 2.6 billion dollars now with the company having some 1.6 billion shares outstanding all right so we divide the 2.6 by the 1.6 billion shares outstanding and we get a value of one point um, one dollars and 61 cents all right so that is how we valued Spur Tree at IPO. All right, so we got a value of $1.61. Now, remember, the IPO price was $1. So to us, the IPO was going for a discount of some 
all right so the ipo was selling at a 61 percent and um hence spur tree was a definite buy for us all right so we jumped in we bought the firm at the one dollar no new information is now out in the market what is spur tree valued let us update our model to depict the new information that we now have of the company. Okay, so let us do a quick um, update of spur tree value. All right, so this is a model, as you can see, um, in the yellow cell, the company, we got the company at $1.61. So what we'll do is to update the assumptions and see what the value um, comes out to be. So first, what we want to do is to change the base year. All right, so now that figures is out for 2021, we want to change the base year from 2020 to 2021. All right, so what we need to do is to grab the turnover for 2021 and insert it. So 2021, 2021 figure was what, $859 million. All right. All right, so at first we valued we, we assume the company was growing at 20% for the first five years. No, with this new information, we realize that the export market is really untapped. So Spur Tree has a long um, room for growth in the export market. It is considering exporting to the Caribbean, which wasn't a part of our analysis when we first look at it. The local market, the company is now talking about expanding in the local market. All right, so we'll have to take that into consideration. Um, the company is also talking about becoming um, more than just a company that deals with sauces and spices. All right, so it is uh, making talk about becoming a full blown food company. All right, so as you can see, the company has a lot of growth prospects, a lot of avenue for growth. And it seems that the company is willing to explore all avenues. And the company does have the balance sheet, the strength, um, a strong balance sheet and has a lot of cash that can propel um, it into any direction that it wants to go. All right, so we need to update this um, growth rate. So even though this 20% is really a lot of growth, because this is compounded growth, all right, but with this new young company um, looking to do what they, they are planning on doing, and the fact that the company have this Aki product that it claims is, is um, we cannot, they cannot supply the demand for that product overseas, we are saying then let us use a 30% growth rate for the first five years, all right, and see what, what happens. Um, for the five years to um, the six years to 10 years, when the company kind of becomes a more mature company, all right, so it becomes more mature, we are expecting the growth rate to slow a bit. So we're assuming a 12% growth rate. All right. No, it's operations. All right. So I wonder if you're following. So let's let me use a color code. I didn't want to do this, but I want you to follow. All right. So we're dealing with the margins. All right. So what we notice the company continues to improve on its margin over the years. All right, so 2020, the company has operating margin of 14%, 2021 last year, operating margin increased by 2% to 16%. Now in the first quarter, we realized that operating margin has a blown out um, growth 
of 39%. All right, so operating margin came in at 39% 2021. What we noticed though is that there is seasonality with the margins of the company because in the December period, operating margin increase. All right, but first quarter, operating margin 29%, that um, 39%, that is huge. All right. Now, will the company continue these um, to have these types of margin? What will cause the company to sustain these types of margin? One, the company is planning to expand expand production capacity. All right, and that is from both harm of the business, the spur tree harm of the business, and also the exotic product Jamaica Limited harm of the business. All right, so with the expansion of the production capacity comes what they call the economies of scale economies of scale means the margins will grow all right so as a company tap into these new markets the company has unlimited um opportunity to grow and expand and create a, a more efficient structure all right so here what we're gonna do we're gonna inch up the margin move up the margin to 20 percent all right we can review this and if you think that it is too much moving from eight percent to 20 percent might be too much but as i said 2021 the margin was 16 and 2021 was not the most efficient year of the company i will see where the, the margin continues to increase so i'm comfortable using a 20 percent margin all right now for the six years to the 10 year when the company is more mature all right it could be then that margins will squeeze here um we're not expecting margin to continue to expand reason being is that the company is planning to become a full-blown food company so the company has that operate in a jamaican market for one as a, um, a food company so it is competing against a grace kennedy all right it is competing against uh derrymont and lots of uh, alaska so a lot of other established companies all right and we realize that the food business is small margin business all right, so we are expecting that the company margin supposed to be squeezed as it expands into those markets. However, if the company continues to um, penetrate the overseas market with the brand that it has, then it will be able it will be able to continue to sell on the overseas market at high premium. All right, so there is a balancing effect. All right, <clears throat> so. Let me put a 15% margin, all right, as it expands into the Jamaican market and the margin began to squeeze, all right? So that's a 15% margin. And for the last year, we'll go back to the 8% or the 15% still, all right? So the company has now matured into a more, we have a more matured company. All right, so those are the assumptions. Let us go down to the cash flow to see what it looks like. All right, so we're dealing with here. All right, so 2021 revenue, as you can see, revenue is expected to grow to $1.1 billion in 2021. All right, that's not bad. 1.4 billion dollar in 2023 Th these seems like reasonable growth rate i mean if the company really taps into the market that the company is planning on top into revenue can even grow faster than this all right but in 10 years time we're expecting the company to be a five billion dollar company all right so that's that's not a bad look all right, so here is where the margin, we're saying two, 15% margin for the terminal here. Let's change that also. All right. All right, so these are the margins and this is the EBITDA or the EBIT. 
all right and this is the EBIT after tax and again the, the the company will not pay any tax for a couple of years so if you realize the EBIT and the EBIT after tax is the same thing for a couple of years because the company will not be paying any tax so let me just and that's there no tax will be paid all right and this is the reinvestment amount and as we said the company can be reinvested in a large amount as it grows in the capital expenditure or the capital project of the company but where we are taking we are taking a average figure all right so what we have here now in the green we'll paint that in green is what we call the free cash flow to the firm all right so that's a free cash flow to the firm in the green all right so these are the cash flows that we will have to discount back to the present value all right so let us discount these to the present value to see what we get all right so the terminal value as discounted let me just erase these all right so this is the present value i mean the terminal value these are the cash flows after the 10-year period leading up for to eternity all right and we are getting a 29 million dollars all right so in 10 years time those cash flow will be 29 million dollars but we need to carry them back to today's dollar value so they will lead um they will um, be valued at eight million dollars eight billion dollar in today's value so the cash flows leading up to the 10 year that's a cash flow to uh, next year and the other year leading up to the 10 year if we should discount those in today's value they will value at three million dollars three billion dollars should say all right so when we had all of those the company is showing us a value of some 21.7 billion dollars all right but this is for both the debt and the equity holders so what we need to do is to add cash to this amount so let us get the cash from from here because it has some cash here the company has 223 dollars worth of cash all right so we just insert the cash and then the debt the company has some debt we will have to minus or let the company pay the debt all right so the company has some 40 54 million dollars of debt All right, so let us repay the debt. All right. All right. So what we have now is the company being valued at $21 billion, $21.9 billion. All right, so this is assuming that the cash flows that we're getting are guaranteed cash flows, all right? And that happens when you lend government money because the government can always print money and give you back your money. So we assume that the government um, lending money to the government does not have any risk. All right. Now, it's the same assumption that we're doing here, saying that the company does not have any risk. But if the company does not, but this company has a lot of risk. All right. So when we factor in the risk, we're getting a value of 10 million billion dollars for the company all right so to us the company is valued at 10 billion dollars now the company has um shares outstanding of 1.6 billion dollar so when we divide the 10 billion dollar by the 1.6 billion dollar we're getting 6.5 um six dollars and 54 cents per share all right so that's the sheer value of the company to us all right six dollars and 54 cents.